Aretusa dos Santos was born in a place very poor and hopeless, and she felt on her skin the experience of not even having food to survive. We had nothing to eat. We was missing everything in our house. Even the water would be cut it off, and we would ask the neighbors to have some water. We would knock on people's door and ask to have just a little bit of food. And there was a lady that she said, Come here every Friday and I'm going to help you with some food. So every Friday, me and my sister, we would go to this lady's house and she would give it to us, some food and also some raw food. So we would go home so happy and say, look, mom, what we got. It's awful to have your belly hurting because you wanted to eat and you can't. And you need to find money somehow to buy food. And I would think if I go there and the lady say that she doesn't have anything to give. And it was sometimes that she didn't have. <laughs> I have an aunt that she lives in another city that she used to ask me to go to her house. She would pay my ticket and take me there. That aunt, she was already a member of the church. And there, at that meeting, I thought that it's a place that you feel so good. When I returned from the meeting, I was feeling so in peace. That when I met the church, I started telling everybody around me to go there. I met my husband there. And we went to live in a rented house. And then it was a project from the government that we could get a house, we could finance a house. We had no kids yet. But the hunger was still there was no prosperity. Every time when was the time of the campaign of Israel, we would sit or in the middle of the church or behind. Every time was so many beautiful testimonies that I would think, is it that testimonies really real? I never really believed. I was always in doubt. So the only extra money that we had was the money that my husband would get once a year. And then we thought, so if we give this money, it doesn't work. So that was the doubt that we have. And then the campaign would be finished. And then the campaign would come again and God would talk to me. That's the moment. And every time a new testimony, and I would think, no, I don't have the courage. And then the campaign would be done again. And then I got pregnant. My daughter was born. And then I start to be revolted. Because before, when it was just us, we would fight. But we could fix it. But with a baby... And then my mother, with the situation that we had, she would help us with food. But and then the campaign would come. I wanted to get up and obey, but I didn't know how to do it. I heard like was the voice of God, not the voice of the pastor. And the testimonies that I would hear, God would say, come and I'm going to change your life. And the testimony would confirm, it happened with me. So I started being revolted and revolted, to be ashamed and to be humiliated. So I got really revolted. I got really, really angry. Angry that I never heard before and that I never really did it. I got the envelope. I got home and I told my husband, we have nothing to lose. When I got the envelope, I really got the courage. It came the extra salary in the end of the year. We put everything. And we waited for the day to go to the church to give the envelope. We went up. 
We cried so much on the way down, with our hands holding. It looked like it was just us there. And God told me in the right moment. Now everything gonna go forward because you believed me, you trust me. It's gonna happen. I had an idea. Since that day, with that envelope, God gave that idea, the courage to sell my house, to sell my roof, and I did. I put to sale. In less than 30 days, the broker called me and he said, Aretuza, I have a buyer. I sold your house. And then we could pay all the debts that we had from the old house. Before, we could not even maintain paying the rent or anything. And I went to a place that was not from my standard, but I went there an opening. And I went out with a broker, and the broker said, he's not for you. You don't have the condition. It's not for you. If you want, I can find something little for you. But here, it's not for you. But the courage, the revolt that I had at the church when I got the envelope was still inside of me. I returned there alone, not with the broker. And when I went there, I spoke with a guy that was there, and he said that it's somebody that put a house to sell. He's the number. Go there and see it. And then I called the person, and I said, I have to tell the, the truth, that I don't have the money to buy the house. You can build your house. It's no problem when you have the money, and then you pay me. We can go to the office and we're going to register it. We're going to sign that it's not going to be interest in that. And you're going to pay me when you're going to have the money. It was a miracle. He just sold the land. We build the math doesn't match. If you calculate, doesn't match because the money that was left was not much. We put the house for sale and we sold from an amount that we didn't believe. So my first house, a person bought in cash. And then I told the man that I bought the land. Do you remember the debt that I have with you? I'm calling you to pay. So I became a luxury home builder. Criei uma construtora de casa de alto padrão. Was God, was the altar, was God that gave me that direction because I was a manicure. I only knew how to do nails. I never thought about it to have a staff, to have people working for me. Do you have projects with people that have been to the university? So today, the people that come looking for us, looking for our brokers, are engineers, are doctors, because the houses are luxury houses. It's really high standard. In my life, it was a huge revolution. The time that I stayed sitting at the church, if I would have trusted before, my life had changed long before. The time that I was sitting, year by year, now, nothing miss. We have everything. I arrived at the church with nothing, and this God from the altar did it all, did everything to us. The campaign of Israel worked. If I wouldn't have had the courage to do it, the first campaign of Israel, that was the extra salary of my husband, our all, nothing would have happened. We would not have tasted that prosperity, that blessing. Now I understand. 
if you don't sacrifice, if you don't really do it the way that you have to do, if it's not painful, life is limited. I was limited. My biggest treasure is the Holy Spirit. Without Him, I wouldn't be here telling that story. I did not have the strength. He gives me direction. He gives me peace. He gives me joy. We have problems. We have struggles. But God always gives me a certainty that we're going to go through. Welcome to your program, 9 o'clock in the evening, very good evening to all, we are back for the sixth prayer today, today is the sixth cry, six cry out on behalf of everyone that is living the faith of the sacrifice, I'm here on the altar of God together with Pastor Diego and we, together with you to unite our faith, to unite our strength together through the faith of God and you know my dear friend and you just watch right now this wonderful and magnificent testimony of this person who took part of this campaign of Israel this lady that uh, she was living in the poverty she was living a life of shame a life of misery but one day she decided to look to God and about looking to God I would like you, you to have a look to the altar I believe that is possible because the altar is very visible for you that are watching me. You can see the altar. You know that the altar is the place where the lives of the people are transformed. The altar is the place where it changes the identity of people. Here there are people who come depressed and leave the altar with a new life. People who were anger, carry anger like the testimony that we heard yesterday of that uh, mother that fight for the, for the child. And... Uh, on the altar you receive a new life and became a, a lovely boy. Uh, the altar is the place where the person that is poor becomes rich and, and feels of the Holy Spirit. And you know, about looking to the altar, there is, a, there is a verse that I want to share with you that says the following. A verse that says the following in Judges chapter 7 verse 17. It says, And he, Gideon, said to them, Look at me and do likewise. Gideon said to the 300, look at me and do likewise. We see here, uh, Pastor Diego, that uh, Gideon, <laughs> as we were even talking minutes ago to the people that speaks Portuguese, Gideon was um, a man that had a, f that had a lot of issues, complex. But uh, the moment that he came to the altar and he obeyed God and he looked to God, Gideon became a mighty man of valor. What exactly what God told him? Uh, go in this mighty, or go in this mighty of yours. So he became a mighty man, a man of strength, a man of faith, a man ready for all or nothing. And that's why Gideon said, oh, look at me. He told the 300, look at me and do likewise. And, and the question that we are asking the people today is to who they have been looking. Because our eyes are always upon something. All my eyes are upon the altar, all my eyes are upon my situation, upon my, my life, upon me, upon what I am, what I, I am, my needs, my problems. All my eyes are upon what people say, what people do, people say about this, people speak about uh, sacrifice, people criticize. Our eyes are always about something. And the secret is where we have been placing our eyes. Because the moment that our eyes are upon the altar, means that our mind is upon the word of God. And there is no way that God fails. That's why he said to the people, look to me and do likewise, because if you look to me, you're going to break through. It's a fact that there is more bad things for you to put your eyes than good. But it's your decision. It's nobody else's decision. Yours is your eyes. When God spoke these words to Gideon, go in this might of yours, Gideon did not see himself as a mighty man. He saw himself as a failure. He saw himself as the last of the last. But when he took hold of that word, when he allowed that word to come inside of him, and he obeyed, he went to the altar, 
he became exactly what God told him to, to become, a mighty man of value, a leader, somebody who was so ready, so uh, confident that he said, now you're going to look to me, what I do, you're going to do too. And you see the, the, in the, the, the testimony that we just watched, this lady was 15 years inside of the church looking to her condition, God calling her to the altar, even she decided to change her seat, go a little bit to sit in the back, because she thought, if I sit in the back, God will not talk to me. And she was 15 years, you know, with that fight. She, God was calling her, go. But she was saying, I can't. God was saying her, do. And she said, no, it's no, I'm not ready. And how many people are like this? Many. The campaign was coming. The opportunity for her to put her eyes on what God was offering, but she was putting her eyes on herself, on her poverty, on her misery, on the shame. And the same, the same happened with the people of Israel for seven years. We, we know that seven years they looked not to the altar, not to God. Their eyes was on the enemies. Their eyes was on the difficult. The same this woman for 15 years, she was looking at the misery of the poverty. The question, my dear friend, for you is, where are you looking these past years? Maybe this person is suffering for 30, 40 years. There's people who never know what was happiness. Exactly. And sometimes inside of the church. My dear friend, let me tell you something before we pray if your eyes are upon God you're gonna break through your life will change there is no way there is no way that God will fail the Bible says that God is the same of yesterday today and forever when your eyes are upon him you're gonna be able to do your part and to see God is gonna make you my dear friend you a woman of faith you a man of faith a mighty man of value a mighty woman of value God is gonna make you something great and powerful to happen we are ready for the cry out if you can and you are in this faith of the campaign of Israel not maybe you are not yet in this faith but after you receive this word you are deciding today to climb the altar or maybe you are watching me for the first time we're going to pray for you and whatever our voice reach you can be sure that the spirit of God will reach you and is gonna strengthen you let's talk to God in the name of Jesus my Lord and my father it's time for this person to stop to hide stop looking at the misery stop looking at her condition stop looking at the problem and look at your altar and look my Lord to what you have been offering to them so make my Lord this word to enter to enter their hearts to enter their minds uh, as an understanding not as an emotion as a feeling but as an assurance uh, the same way it came to Gideon came to Aretuza came to us we know my Lord that all of us without exception one day we look down on ourselves uh, one day we thought to be unable one day we were miserable too but you changed that my Lord uh, calling us to put our eyes on you to come to your altar to surrender our lives to you in the same call come to this person right now you have been called my dear friend so enough of hiding behind the excuses that you cannot and us awaken this fire awaken your revolt say enough like that woman after 15 years she said enough like Gideon after seven years he said enough how long more can you take it's time of revolt it's time to come to the altar in the name of the Lord Jesus and I pray my father also for those people that sometimes my father they have been looking to their situation many times this person has been suffer conflicts doubts my God a voice that says you cannot make it is hard it's impossible you have already tried in the name of Jesus Christ we rebuke all these voices all the voices of distraction that makes people sometimes to fear that makes people to look back in the name of Jesus Christ my father I ask you wherever our voice reach let your life my father to reach 
reach your people to lift them up to transform the way that they are and to make my father something great and amazed to happen in the name of the Lord Jesus be blessed right now if you are watch me stretch your hands to the altar receive from the altar strength receive from the altar faith receive from the altar the assurance that God is with you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit I pray and if you believe and you agree say amen and amen amen and amen be blessed my dear friend be blessed wherever you are be sure that the Spirit of God already transform you be strong and be of good courage and have courage courage to fight courage to act courage to come to the altar and to be blessed tomorrow we're going to be back for the seventh prayer we're going to continue we are making these prayers monday to friday here on facebook 9 p.m you can share this video you can invite people because you know the opportunity of the campaign of israel is given to everyone for everyone that is suffer but the secret is your eyes to be upon God upon his word and upon and your faith upon him and surely that God is gonna do wonders in your life okay tomorrow we'll be back with one more prayer may God bless you all abundantly and until tomorrow